Hello, beautiful souls. Welcome, my Gemini friends and friends of Gemini. This is the Divine Phoenix Rising Tarot, and hey, I'm Zachary. Thank you guys for joining me here, and welcome to my table. So, Gemini, hello. Good to see you guys. Uh, I do have some messages for you that came through in meditation. A couple oracle cards were pulled, and then we'll look at the tarot as we do. Uh, Gemini, I love you, Gemini. Good to see you. So messages that came through in meditation here. The first thing that came through was speak peace. So I do feel like maybe there's something going on or um, has happened where there is the opposite of peace. Something has been uh, crunchy, a little bit of friction, maybe even uh, to the degree where somebody has betrayed you or um, a relationship has ended for uh, whatever reason. A speak peace into your life is something that is very important in general, but um, at this time, Spirit wants to express that if you're asking for peace, there is a need to speak peace, okay? Um, and then rupture and or rapture bliss came through to approach your bliss. So the way that I take that with rupture or rapture, um, this bringing up or this coming forward, this bursting through action uh, involving bliss. So along the same lines as speaking peace, the message that's coming through is, um, let's say these are things that you're asking for in your life. You're working to manifest more bliss or more peace. Are you allowing those components to come through in your life, especially through, uh, manifestation through speech? Are you speaking those components into your life? And I feel like as far as bliss goes, I'm feeling this component of, especially like the inner child, this is trying to come up, f having fun, playing. There, there are components that are trying to come up for you to experience peace. Um, but there's always a component of like consent. I feel like there's this pressure that's coming up and it involves your bliss in some way, but it's feeling more like a nuisance because maybe you're not recognizing it or um, there's something getting in the way of you just being open and free to explore your bliss or to express your bliss. Let's keep going. Um, so the next thing that I saw was actually the Green Lantern symbol. And I did look up the Green Lantern to get meaning of that. So the Green Lantern symbol itself represents um, the endless cycle of life. Yep. Um, I think that along the lines of peace and bliss that we're talking about, that's a component, that's a part of the cycle of life too. More on the upside, the upside, you know, turning of the wheel, I guess, more on the positive side of that, but it is a part of the cycle nonetheless. Um, as I was reading into that too, so Green Lanterns um, in the in the comic book series, uh, they're chosen because of their ability to overcome fear. And they use this ring, this symbol, to create, essentially, to direct energy, to use their will to create with energy. Um, so I feel like we're talking about manifestation, for sure. The last thing that came through was still sweet after all this time. So um, that's kind of interesting to me. I'd like to, I'm interested to see how that comes forward in the reading because I'm not quite sure what that means, to be honest with you. I do feel like there is a component to, to the inner child, like I said. Um, not that we're forcing ourselves to like be sweet if we don't feel that way, but there's something about tapping into this inner essence, this inner sweetness, okay? Okay, so let's keep moving forward. Keep moving forward. A um, few cards that came out here. We're going to start with the Blue Angel Oracle, and I'm going to read this one directly from the book. So, you guys, we got the Pendragon Sword, which I'm super excited about. This is one of my favorite cards in, in this deck. It represents balanced power. So, this consecrated sword represents balance, power, and wisdom. Qualities bestowed only to those who have earned them. So, it's kind of along the same lines here of, like, the Green Lanterns, I guess, uh, those of you this message is for your green lantern um this is this is a coming of age for you much can be accomplished now with relative ease provided you remain balanced and grounded you are bestowed the power of the dragon ruler king and magician this great honor and privilege is also a great responsibility you can hold this power indefinitely for as long as you honor respect and use it wisely 
Um, so what comes up actually in reading that, being able to hold that power indefinitely as long as we honor it, essentially. Um, still sweet after all this time. I feel like that is coming up in regards to this. There is um, that sweetness is that uh, respect, that honor. Okay. So let's keep moving forward here. The other two cards that came out, the Urban Crow Oracle is what I was directed to use here. You guys got Teamwork and Wrath. Wow. This is interesting, um, especially with Wrath, I would say. There have been messages for you guys that have come through a lot over the past year here um, or so <laughs> um, surrounding something that fell apart, particularly like a relationship and uh, a need to work through that either inside, inside, with the self or with whoever this person is, okay? Both of these cards, both Teamwork and Wrath, the book describes, so Teamwork, um, they describe how crows come together to fight off the intruder, essentially. Um, it represents working together, though. Working together as a team. Everybody having their role and that role fitting in perfectly to the greater design. Now, Wrath, um, this is kind of taking the description of Teamwork to... Uh, much higher <laughs> uh, angry degree, I guess. In the book, they describe uh, wrath through the process of um, retribution and revenge. So a raccoon steals one of the baby crows from the nest and the crows go after this raccoon. <laughs> um, it's turning anger up a notch by including revenge is what wrath is. So the book asks or requests, recommends to consider the energy that's being created with anger and revenge. If that is ultimately positively impacting you, even, I mean, even forgetting anybody else outside of that situation in brewing up revenge, wrath, is that positively serving you? I feel like you're the only one who can actually answer that. Um, personally, I don't feel that revenge ever really positively serves us. Um, you may disagree and that's totally fine. Personally, I don't, I don't feel like there is a place for revenge. <laughs> we, may, we may go into those places of wrath, we're experiencing that emotionally, but it's one thing to experience something emotionally, to validate that. And it's another to put that into practice, to put that into play. And if it hurt none, do what you will, is kind of what comes through to me. And I, I know there are some vile things that can happen to us and that have happened to us. Um, I just, I, I'm gonna stand firmly. That is, that is what I believe, that is what I know personally. Um, it's never really going to help in a positive way to enact revenge. So. Um, let's get into your tarot messages here, you guys. See where this goes. Um, Phantasma deck is what we're going to start with today. So, Spirit, what do we have here for Gemini? My Gemini friends. Huge shout out to my channel members, you guys. Thank you so much for your love and support. If you're interested in becoming a channel member yourself, there is a join button next to the subscribe under this video. Or you can click the link in the description of this video. And I do have my website in the description as well. If you're interested in personal readings, I do have that open and available currently. Presently. Okay. So what do we have for Gemini? Let me get my fingers to work here. Page of Cups. So this is your hopes, hopes and dreams. What you're after. Um, I do feel like you guys are working to bring a new reality into play here. To pull something down from the ether to make it real. Having that green lantern symbol come through in meditation, I feel like this is what this is pointing to. You're working to manifest something. You're working to um, maybe even manage some emotions that may feel overwhelming with both teamwork with wrath coming through especially and pen dragon sword that's an interesting 
kind of back to that for a second. It's an interesting um, dichotomy of energies. It's like you've you've got this power of the Pendragon Sword, and you can use that as long as you want. But there's a need to surrender to the sweetness in order to to use this. Wrath has no place. Revenge has no place in utilizing the Pendragon Sword. In fact, I feel like stepping into that energy creates a loss for you here in being able to utilize this energy. And you want that energy, okay? Um, let's use the other, other tarot deck here is the Fortuna tarot deck. Ooh, had one fall out here. Seven of Cups. I do feel like there is a feeling of being lost here in um, either <clears throat> a delusion <clears throat> is what comes through imagination land. You may be, you may be trying to process through this anger, or wrath, whatever this is, in imagination land, which is not a bad thing. Like that's it's okay to process through emotions in that way. Um, but with that coming out, it makes me feel like there may be, you may be a little stuck especially with Page of Cups there in the hope, there is a need to come back down to reality. Okay, so what do we have here for Gemini? And this is a general message, everybody, so please keep that in mind. Use your head, heart, and intuition to decipher which messages are for you and leave the rest behind. You are intelligent. You are a co-creator here. Please remember that. And feel free to check out your Rising Moon Venus, any other major placements in your chart. Um, we do have every sign in our chart, just depends on where. So feel free to take a look at your complete story. What's this one? Right, say again. It is this one. Okay. <laughs> okay. So your fear aversion here, you have Princess of Talismans. This is, um, Page of Pentacles. So Princess of Talismans, Page of Pentacles. In your fear aversion here, this is um, this is taking something and making it new. Being clever, revitalizing something is what comes through. As far as an angel, angel, it's mixing angel and anger, interesting, anger. <laughs> as far as anger, anger is coming through you guys. Um, as far as anxiety, something you're avoiding here, I do feel like there is some work that needs to go into improving your situation. And there's an aversion to that right now. You just don't feel like working. I don't know. Maybe you're tired. Maybe you're tired of dealing with these emotions. Hmm? I feel you. <laughs> I get it. Okay, so let's get into your message here, you guys. Temperance comes through here to start. I'm trying to move these out of the way. Temperance. So peace, harmony, balance being in your general here, um, a need to take something that is one way and make it into something else. Um, you guys have had a lot of Sagittarius energy come through as well in these readings. Um, it seems like anytime there's something coming up surrounding either relationship, friends, old relationship, something that happened between you and Sagittarius specifically, I don't know. Um, it can also be representing... I feel like there are parts of your opposition, could be in your shadow, that you may be denying. Parts of yourself that you're denying. Maybe there's some sweetness in, in Sagittarius energy, in movement, in expansion. We do have Jupiter in Gemini currently, so there is expansion happening with Gemini. If you're watching this, there's some Gemini in your chart somewhere, right? It just depends on where it is. So I encourage you to look as well to see where Gemini is being expanded in your chart currently. If this is your sun sign, we're talking about expansion of the ego. Um, things being a little bit easier to handle egoically. That may have been tricky in the past. Maybe some wrath that's coming up to be dealt with. Um, seven of Candles comes through to clarify this next. So Seven of Wands. This is um, high, taking courage, okay? Meditation, protecting the self. I feel like you guys are entering a period, especially with Jupiter, Jupiter entering Gemini. My words say, my goodness. Jupiter entering Gemini. 
things become easier wherever your Gemini is in this expansion. Um, I think this is time to step out of a shell that you've built around yourself, this protection that you've built around yourself. Not fully, not to like fully step out of protection, that's not what I'm saying, but um, with rupture and rapture bliss that was coming through in meditation, in order for that to come up, there has to be a place for it to come through. And I feel like these protections that you've built over time are causing issues with things like peace and, and bliss coming forward. Okay, so good stuff. Let's move into your good stuff, you guys. Knight of Wands to start. This is, uh, I feel like, a chance a chance to start over, a, a new, or a chance to try again for some of you. Not necessarily towards a relationship, maybe. Maybe there's an opportunity to rekindle a friendship. Um, if this is you that this is talking about, something in the past between you and Sagittarius and specific, specifically. Um, but this is being creative, spontaneous, having passion for life. So I do feel like reinvigoration is what's coming through to me. This is an opportunity in this period, especially with Jupiter and Gemini, for things to expand, like I said, for things to get better. But there's a need to allow, allow yourself to get back up on that horse and try again. Nobody's gonna put you back up there except for you, okay? Um, hanged man comes in here to clarify this, or hanged one, the hanged one. Being in your good stuff. So I do feel actually that this is a delay, a pause, some sort of time encumbrance that is being lifted in, um, in you especially deciding to take a step in a direction here to approach your life again. If things have been at a standstill, things have felt gridlocked at work, relationships, what, what have you, I do feel like there was a break here there was a force break or delay. Um, and I feel like that's lifting, okay? Especially with your participation, like I said. Cool. Love it. Moving into happier times. Love it. What you don't see coming or what's in the dark here, what's unknown. Uh, five of Wands comes through. So Five of Wands is um, conflict, competition. It can be <clears throat> improving, like uh, improving a skill, getting better training kind of thing. What I get from this is you may not be aware, and this is kind of like being stuck in, in imagination land, you may not be aware of the part that you're playing in a conflict or competition. Maybe you are in a pissing match with somebody. If that's the case, I'm not saying this is everybody, but if that's the case, there's a call to to own own your shit, right? <clears throat> Excuse me. Own your participation in something. For the sake of your own growth. This is a part of the honor and respect that's needed to maintain the energy of the Pendragon Sword, too. Not saying that, you know, like we're always gonna have conflict and competitions, ego's always gonna come up from time to time. We are human but we're working to improve ourselves here. This is a training ground, <laughs> being human. This is um, an opportunity to improve our skills. So let's take that opportunity to improve. I do also take it as um, there may be some residual, if you are dealing with wrath and revenge, it may take a little bit of time for you to work through some of these energies but I just get this like fighting the self, <clears throat> excuse me, by fighting others, you're also fighting yourself. And that's getting in the way of your, of your progress, okay? Um, four of candles, four of wands comes through here to clarify. So this is like a, a crossing of a threshold, major mile marker. I feel like whenever, whatever this conflict is talking about, um, it's between you, a very powerful force, and another powerful force. And I'm just getting that the point for either of you 
is not to win. Like no, nobody's winning regardless of what happens. It's not a win-lose kind of situation. In recognizing this, in putting the energy and will, like using that Green Lantern symbol, to speak peace, to speak ble bliss into your life. These words, my goodness. To speak bliss and peace into your life. This is uh, like a crowning achievement for you. This is, uh, you're leveling up. It's a crossing of a threshold, like I said. You guys are starting to master whatever this is, this energy that is consistently getting under your skin. Because I do feel like this is something repetitive. This isn't the first time maybe something like this has happened, whatever it is that's happened. Um, and not saying that you deserve, you know, people treating you poorly or, or anything like that. This is all asking us to look at what part we're playing in our own lives as well, okay? So your obstacle, moving into your obstacle here. King of Pentacles to start. 2112 on the timer as well. So King of Pentacles is, um, is wealth, it's abundance. Um, knowing how to build that wealth, being generous to give that information on how to build wealth or wealth itself. Um, in the shadow side, it can be it can be greedy too. I feel like there's something about uh, being generous, okay, that's coming through here as far as your difficulty, as far as your challenge. Whatever this wrath is that's coming up is affecting your ability to experience life in a generous way. What is being gen to me like being generous means that you are already experiencing abundance. You have more than enough to share. So you share it. That's being generous. If you are looking to live an abundant life in whatever form, there will come a time where generosity has to be a part of that too, to remain balanced. I feel like right now um, there may be a lack of abundance, experience of abundance. If this is you, the call to action here is to start even if you don't feel like you have everything that you would like to give to people, to start being more generous. Create that energy cycle in your life. Start giving, okay? If you want to receive and you're not receiving right now, start giving. And I feel like this is a challenge because there is some anger. Maybe somebody did screw you over. Maybe life has been unkind. That's all real sometimes but it's still our choice to decide how we want to respond to that, right? We can still choose to be a generous person if we're hurting. Not saying that you have to, but we can hold complex emotions, okay? Six of candles comes through to clarify this here. Six of wands. Um, this, is a, this is a victory too. It's the compo component of recognition that comes through for me here as far as the uh, obstacle, the, the recognition is self-recognition or recognizing the cycle. Maybe recognizing that um, you do want to be more generous in your life or you are struggling with that. You're struggling with how to hold abundance. Interesting. I feel like can we get some advice on that, please, Spirit? This is the Wild Unknown Tarot here. Anything else there on that, on the challenge for Gemini? Um, Son of Pentacles and Six of Swords comes out. So we're talking, I mean, we've been talking about expansion here. I feel like there is a large component to just kind of, to your process here of just stepping out of your way. Um, Six of Swords is about transition. Son of Pentacles, Knight of Pentacles is about um, expansion as well. I'm thinking about, there's this Casey Musgrave song. I think it's called rainbow basically it's it's just saying like 
you're behaving as if the storm is still going, but there's actually a rainbow outside. There, there's been a rainbow over your head this whole time. So what I'm getting from that is like the, the victory that you want to experience, the abundance that you want in your life, you want to experience, it's here. But there's a need to accept that into your life. I do feel like there are some angry emotions that are getting in the way of you experiencing your peace and your bliss. Okay. Let's pull an animal oracle card here. The wild unknown. Animal spirit. <clears throat> and then we'll move into the extended version. Okay. Extended version of this reading. And if you want to join me there, there'll be links in the description of the video. So what do we have here for Gemini, please, spirit? At this time... So butterfly and dragon came through. Interesting. <clears throat> interesting, interesting. Um, butterfly, there is that component of transformation. I do feel like guys are going through transformation, especially with Jupiter and Gemini. Like I said, there's this expansion that's happening. You're in the cocoon. <clears throat> You're working to expand. And there's a need to... <clears throat> excuse me. There is a need to... Like allow allow the body, allow this process to do what it needs to do. It already knows how to do that is kind of what I'm feeling. And you may be trying to get in the way. There's a need to just let something flow, to let it heal, to let yourself grow, flow to grow. Okay. With dragon, I'm going to, um, read the, read it from the book here. I'm feeling called. Seeing one's most true self and balancing the ego. Yes. The dragon sees everything. Its essence has been with us since before our first breath and will be there at our last. It watches us navigate the external world as well as our inner world. When dragon energy is awakened, we are courageous, visionary, and can easily drop into witness consciousness. It is almost as if we are traveling with a great friend inside of ourselves. When we look in the mirror, deep in our eyes, we may even glimpse the self behind the self, the one who is watching us. This is the power of the dragon, breathing transformative fire into every cell of our bodies. Witnessing this omnipotent energy, even for a brief moment, helps us surrender and let go. We let the dragon guide us. We hop on its back for a ride, and as we traverse even the most difficult terrain, the dragon's eyes see beauty everywhere. It is said that if a yogi does not see beauty in the world, their ajni is dim. Ajni is described as inner fire or sacred intelligence. May even just the mention of the dragon stir the embers of intelligence within you. Uh, and the dragon symbolizes the solar plexus chakra, the third chakra. So I love the dragon energy was coming through here a few times, a couple times here. We are in the year of the dragon as well. Um, <clears throat> there is a need to work through some ego, to start seeing something for what it actually is. Both you, your participation in your own life, in a situation, in multiple situations, and also to be able to see without the filter of ego, maybe somebody else's behavior, actions, participation, okay? I feel like this is all for your benefit in transformation. Getting those components out of the way so that you can transform, okay? All right, Gemini, I love you guys. Thank you so much for joining me here. If this is where we part, thank you for being here, like I said. Um, if you want to join me for the extended, I do have links in the description. Personal readings are available if you want to check that out, as I said. Please like, share, comment, subscribe, hit that notification bell. All great ways to support me and the growth of this channel, and I truly appreciate it. I do have my Cash App and PayPal links in there as well if you decide to tip or donate. I really appreciate you guys, those who do support the channel in that way. It goes a long way. So thank you, thank you. We are going to look at direct messages from your higher self. Love and advice, career and advice, and um, what is most likely being manifested? <clears throat> My throat today, goodness. What is most likely being manifested for you guys based on your thoughts and emotions, okay? Please take care of yourself. I love you, Gemini. We'll see you soon. Be well.